Victor, and today I'm going to be talking about uh, schizophrenia. And I'm going to start off by showing you guys a YouTube clip. This clip is uh, from the movie A Beautiful Mind. Uh, it chronicles the life of um, Professor John Nash which uh, he was one of the most famous uh, people with uh, schizophrenia. Alicia! No. Hello, I need Dr. Rosen's office, please. You gotta stop her, John. You leave her out of this. Who are you talking to? Stop her full. John. She'll compromise us again. No, she won't. You'll go back to the hospital. John, yes, sir, ma'am. Countless people will die. Alicia, please, put the phone down. I can't let that happen. Yes, sir. Hello. Hi, I need Dr. Rosen in here. I'm sorry, John. No! So as you can see right here, there's nobody there. This, um, this was all in Professor Nash's head. Um, he actually won, uh, I believe he was a physicist, and he actually won a Nobel Prize uh, in his later years. Okay, so uh, schizophrenia is a mental illness that affects uh, 2.4 million adults over the age of 18. It's not, uh, it doesn't target any specific race or any, you know, uh, sexual orientation, whatever. It affects men and women equally. Uh, it's not something that you can catch, like, like herpes or something. <laughs> it's not, as far as we know, it has some uh, traits of a hereditary disease, but there's a lot of other factors that go into um, developing schizophrenia. I'm gonna talk about that more today. <coughs> uh, so, which leads me to my first point. What is schizophrenia? Schizophrenia was defined, uh, the first person to define it was Dr. Mill Kirkland. Uh, she identified it at first as a small mental disorder uh, at the time that it was identified, we weren't uh, aware that it was it would turn into such a big thing. Uh, people weren't aware that it was going to turn into a long-term uh, disease that would affect the person for the rest of their life. So basically what happens in schizophrenia is a person uh, is characterized with it. Uh, their thought processes break down. They have, uh, like, they're socially awkward. Um, and they'll become like emotionally deficit, which means uh, you can show them something scary or like try to make them laugh and they'll just be indifferent. <coughs> um, some of these symptoms include, uh, some of the symptoms of schizophrenia include, uh, they'll hear like sound hallucinations, so they'll hear things that aren't there, uh, delusions like you saw in the clip. Uh, that guy with all in his head, uh, it's like a, he has like a conspiracy theory going on. And he believes that like the FBI is after, uh, um, <coughs> excuse me, out to get him. So they'll be unorganized in their thought speech uh, patterns and stuff. And then, uh, like I said, they'll be socially awkward. And they they believe that somebody's out to get them. So they start forming all kinds of like conspiracy theories against other people. <coughs> so now that I've talked about uh, some of the symptoms of schizophrenia and what it is, uh, I'm gonna talk about how a person gets it. So like I said before, it's not a disease that's, as far as we know, predominantly genetic. So you can't get it straight from your parents, even though that is one of the things that uh, contributes to it. Another one of the things that contributes to it is environment, physical trauma, uh, you know, abuse as a child. All these things can contribute to a person developing schizophrenia. <coughs> In addition to that, drug use also contributes to a person developing this disease. Things such as uh, marijuana, cocaine, and even to a lesser extent, alcohol, all these things um, can cause a person to hallucinate. And, you know, if through prolonged use, this can uh, turn into a bigger problem, and then that's how someone can develop uh, schizophrenia. In addition to that, brain makeup is also one of the things that, uh, that, uh, whatever, that's how, one of the things that you can get schizophrenia from. Um, abnormalities have been discovered in the temporal lobes, the hippocampus, the amygdala, all these things control emotions and like thought patterns and speech. Um, 
abnormalities to these parts of the brain are also thought to contribute to uh, a person having schizophrenia. <coughs> So, which leads me into my next point, how schizophrenia is treated. So when the, first, when the disease was first discovered, um, people weren't aware that it, was, it would turn into something super serious. So like, they thought uh, it could be treated right away. So one of the early treatments was uh, electric shock therapy, <coughs> which was, they would basically strap you down and like send all these uh, electrical impulses into your brain, which was thought to like, uh, it was supposed to stimulate the area of your brain that would cause like the delusions and stuff. And uh, you know, through more use of this treatment, it was discovered that this wasn't an effective method because people that had this would have uh, relapses and stuff or the effects of the schizophrenia would be uh, more pronounced. So they would show more. So current treatments now for schizophrenia, like modern medicine, there's therapy that you can go to. Uh, you surround yourself with people that are positive and supporting uh, with your condition. And then with the advances that we have in modern medicine, there, a cure is gonna be discovered sooner rather than later. <coughs> and then, so in conclusion, uh, schizophrenia is a serious mental disease, and hopefully after seeing this presentation, hearing this, uh, you guys have, have a, a better understanding of what this disease is. Um, so we know after hearing this, we know that environment, genetics, uh, substance abuse, all these things are factors that can contribute to a person getting schizophrenia. And now that we know what it is, hopefully if you guys you know, show any of these symptoms, you might want to get checked out. Thank <laughs> you.